All right. I don't know if I want to bother if we did the intro. I think we're just getting into it. So, yeah. Up to you. Probably just getting into it straight away. So, yeah. Welcome, Mr. Will. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. Very good. Okay. So, as I said to you before, like this uh, podcast is about family, friendship, uh, yeah. your origins, your schooling, work life, and the future, what it, what it beholds. So, uh, thanks again, man. Like, no, that's all right. I said to you a few months ago, uh, Will put his hand up when I made a commitment to wanting to do podcasting, and he was the first person to say, I'll do it. And I was like, fuck, now I'm committed. So, here we go. And this is uh, day one. So, welcome day one, again. take two. It's <laughs> here pretty much. So, yeah, where, where do you originate from? Like, what's your nation- nationality? Nationality, parents of, uh, born in Cyprus. Yep. So, we're Greek speaking um, Cypriots. Yep. Um, parents, well, mum came here when uh, she was four years old, so back in 1960, 61. Yep. Um, dad came here when he was 20 years old, and that was 1971. Beautiful. And they met here. It was sort of like a setup. Yep, yep. But at the same time, it wasn't like, you know, um, dad had met mum and said, yeah, I'm interested. And and that was it. Yeah. You know. Um, and you're saying your, your dad had come here because your brother, his brother was that's here right. in Australia. Um, and at yeah. the same time, he was. So, yeah. he came here in 1969 and he was working here, living uh, with other Rellos. Yep. And... Um, Dad came over here just just to work a bit, and he was gonna, you know, do what he had to do, and then with my uncle to go back overseas, and um, that didn't end up happening. They stayed here for a few years. Yep. Um, you know, Dad met Mum, they got married, and my uncle ended up going back overseas, and Dad ended up staying. Yeah, no, beautiful. So here we are. Yeah, no, nice. Yeah, no, good, good. And they built around the, in the western suburbs as well, in the yep. suburbs of St. Albans. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was an already built house. It would have been brand new back then. Yep. So just just up the road here it used oh, to be yeah. um, all uh, like a horse trotting, you know, training tracks. Oh, okay. Around yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So yep. it was just like where we are. It was all um, all paddocks. Yeah. And across the road. And, that was. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like, yeah, because we, we're not far, we grew up not far from here as well. Yeah. Where Brimbank Shopping Center is, and basically the shopping center was there. Yeah. There was absolutely nothing but paddocks nothing as well. Um, and we had, our house was the first one built yeah. in our court at the time. Yeah, well. And we, the dad had like the, um, a white Kingswood, where basically, we would, you wouldn't go through the, the built roads to get to the shops, we just went straight yeah, through straight the Straight through, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, pretty yeah. cool being, you know, um, five years old. Funny you mention that. <laughs> um, I think Dad and some of the other Rellos helped not build the shopping centre, yeah. but um, all the old pavers that were outside, um, oh. you know, Target and yeah, yeah. was it Treasure Way back then? Oh my God, that's a brand I haven't heard of for fucking years. <laughs> yeah. Um, Treasure Way, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there was, they yeah, they yeah. did all, all the paving and, yeah. and all that as as the shopping centre was built. I mean, it would have been Franklin's as well back then too. There was Franklin's, Safeway was Franklin's Safeway, still yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Treasure Way, that was where, I think pretty much where Coles is now. Yep. So if you go in um, where, where the Coles entrance is, mm-hmm. they used to be all, what like, Target was, yeah, Target was... It was Treasury yeah, that, where Coles is and Target is still where they are. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. think it's only the Target and the Woolies, which is the, the predominant two two things that have yeah, 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 remained yeah. there, haven't they? Everything yeah. else has moved around. So. And um, I, I don't yeah. remember anything else in there. What do I remember? Um, the, the Chinese restaurant, Golden Gate, had the, like the Golden... Never went there. Golden Chinese. Fucking fantastic. It was amazing. Never went yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah, it's funny if you go to Gladstone Park now um, and look at their Gladstone Park shopping center, you walk in there and it's like going through a time machine. Basically. Yeah, it is. It is. It's ridiculous because they have not renovated nah, at all ever since I reckon the investors yeah. put money in Room Bank, put money in there. And it's just, you look at it, it's an absolute dive. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, I've, I've been here <laughs> once or twice. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not bad what they've done with, with Brimbank. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. No, it's good. I think for like 30 years they've been like, oh, you know, oh we're going to get cinemas, we're going to get cinemas. And it's just oh, like, no, it never happens. Bullshit. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Crack, crack up, so. It all went up to Water Gardens. Yeah. So you were in, um, you're in St Albans, your grandparents are in Thomastown. Faulkner. Faulkner. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when, when they first come to Australia with my mum, um, they lived with, so my grandfather's brother, I'm pretty sure it was, mm. or his son, um, they lived with them for a while until they built their own house in Faulkner. Yeah. And um, that's where mum was raised. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, you know, and then later on down the track, that's where, not we weren't raised there, but you know, we had a lot, of, a lot of our memories, you know, going to our grandparents' house and... Yeah, yeah, because you, you know, had a lot of your cousins too. Cousins and, yep. you know, the neighbours and, yep. you know, we knew a few people around there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. is that around, around a similar time when your mum had the florist? You, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, mum had the forest... Uh, she started in 1988. Yep. Yeah, so like, we were still young. Yeah. Um, what was it, grade four or something? And that, that was the reason why I left Albanvale. Yep. And went to school down there. Um, but yeah, we were in and out of that shop, you know, nearly every day. Mm. And then, you know, as we got older, you know, instead of going back to the shop, my brother and I would just, you know, come straight home and... Yeah, you know, do what we had to do, and that was it. Oh, that's it, beautiful. Yeah, cool, cool. but it was, yeah. you know, it was an experience. Yeah, you know, growing up in that shop, and you know, we had friends in Ascot Vale. You know, not as many friends here at home, but it was mm. just cousins, so we just mixed with them, and yeah, yeah. So yeah. friendships are kind of hard, like growing up with schooling yeah. and all, that because you, yeah. you also went through your education at different places as well. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So I had a few friends. From here in St Albans, in Auburn Vale. Yeah. Um, there's only one that I stay in contact with still. Yep. Um, all, all the guys from St Mary's in Ascot Vale never really associated with them after school. Mm. Um, like when we finished grade six, a few went to one school, a few went to another school. So we just all went everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, if you see them, Hey, it's all right. Hi, how are you? How you been? Yeah. That's it. But um, we're not in no, each no, other's friends, pockets. just more acquaintances yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever get bullied and har harassed at all? And um, not, no, I wouldn't say bullied, I wouldn't say bullied, more harassed. Yep. Um, because I wasn't different, but having psoriasis and that and mm. you know, having that bit of dandruff and people like that, but, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got snow in your hair and yeah. stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It yeah, is what it is. Off. Yeah, I think as I mentioned to you as well, like I went through the phase with uh, pimples and acne. Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, it does, affects your self-esteem a lot as well. And yeah, it, it did, it did. Of, yeah, in terms of being able to Approach the opposite sex and like oh, mate, talk to girls on, and all you're that. Spot on. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you had more friends than you ever did a girlfriend because well, I course. never had one. So. Of course, <laughs> yeah. That, so. That's how I was like. You know, we used to you know either catch a tram home or catch a train home, and yeah, you do see a few attractive girls on the train. And, you know, you'd, you know, you you wish you could talk to them, mm. but that's like no, I didn't have the confidence because yeah. you feel like you're going to get laughed at or. You know, get ridiculed or whatever. Yeah. So I thought, you know, no, totally. just let, let them be and, you know, eventually one day. Yeah. You know, now, you know, confidence goes up and, you know, you can't shut me up now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Why not, man? That's the way to be. So, yeah. So you're in a relationship now too, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Beautiful. All good. Five years. Good. Nice. Good work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a top girl. So you're mainly with grandparents and cousins as you're growing up is there any particular like story that always comes up at family gatherings that uh you'd rather they forget <laughs> yep that, that's the caravan one yeah <laughs> yeah um tell us about that well yeah when i was younger i would have been i think year eight or something like that um mum had a caravan at the back of the shop yeah and um i don't know if you remember that greeny blacky mesh 
It was like a shade cloth type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got a strand of that, and I'm sitting there, and, and you know, just lighting it, watching the flame go up, and you know, like getting close to my finger, and I, you know, let it go and whatever. But a bit, it dripped into the carpet, and it was that. Well, it was quite flammable. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, material, um, and I've you know, put my foot in it, tried to put it out, or thought that I put it out, and thought nothing of it. Went back inside the shop, and then. Um, you know, I was in there doing what I was doing. Mum reckons that she heard a knock on the door. And um, she's gone out to have a look. There was no one there. Uh. And then she's come back in two minutes later and a, a louder knock on the door. And as she's opened the door, she's looked up because <laughs> the stairs went up to, you know, the level of the caravan. Yeah, yeah. And um, all she saw was these flames coming out of the windows and oh, everything. Fuck. And um, she's quickly bolted and you know, moved the car before that caught fire as well. Um, and that day, my brother and sister, luckily they weren't at the shop because they were a bit younger. And mum, you know, was at the back of her head that they were in the caravan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she sort of freaked out, opened the door, and you know, all this yeah, smoke yeah, yeah. crying yep. to her face. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, she come in. She said, where are the kids? Where are the kids? I said the kids, kids are gone. And you know, um, you know, the caravan caught fire. Called the fire brigade. They came down and you know, took fingerprints and all that shit. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And then <laughs> after, after that, um, you know, mum let it go for a few days. And then yeah. I've done something wrong. And then fucking just unleashed yeah <laughs> and um yeah that was yeah. it yeah never again yeah. yeah and when when your oldies tell you don't play with matches don't play with fire um yeah don't do it yeah you listen don't do it <laughs> as you say no yeah cool. unreal yeah what was the worst thing i've done well, we had a caravan incident as well but we used to foster kids years ago yeah, yeah, yeah. one thing one thing that comes to mind is that we had one kid and he was a bit of a rat bag and he would get into mischief in such a way that I was trying to tell him, don't do that because mum and dad will come out and take off as well. Yeah. But what had happened one day is that the caravan was close to the fence and basically this kid had, jumped, had climbed the fence and got on the caravan and on the roof of the house. And I'm like, like don't, oh, don't do that, man. Get down, get down. So anyway, I've, I've managed to get him down first and then... I think it was either mum or dad had come out whilst I'm on the caravan and I'm the one that got belted. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, and it, like they did, they pretty much didn't listen to me that day yeah. because they, they assumed that I was being a rat bag because yeah. I was back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it took at least four or five hours for, yeah. for me to actually Come say on. to them, this yeah. is what had happened. Yeah. And then, yeah, he got in trouble. So, oh, Jesus. So, yeah. that, that, that reminds me of a story. Yeah. Um, we were younger and we used to do Greek dancing. Yep, yep. So it was just me and my brother, a couple of cousins, a couple of mates, um, you know, went to Greek dancing lessons and whatever. Yeah. And um, one of my cousins had climbed onto the roof of the building mm -hmm. and one of the other kids was like, I want to get up there too, I want to get up there too. And my cousin got back down and we boosted him up. Yeah. All right, and then the instructor came out and he goes, fuck, what are you doing up there? Yeah. And he goes, you know, boys, help me down. Help me down. No, you want to get up there? Yeah, you, <laughs> you can tell down. yourself. Oh, and he's the one that went to trouble. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole community knew about it, obviously, because... Oh, it, every, like it, everyone in that, um, like in that class knew yeah, about yeah. it and he got into trouble and, yeah. <laughs> and we just had a bit of a laugh. Nah, crack up. That's unreal, yeah. <laughs> so, like... Back to schooling briefly. Yeah. Did you did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy that time? Or? I did. Yeah, I did. Um, primary school was pretty good, you know, um, at Auburn Vale because uh, I had all my friends there. Yep. Um, yeah, that was up until grade four, and then from there, because Mum had the shop in Ascot Vale, we went to mm. primary school there, which was St Mary's from grade four to grade six. Made a few new friends there. Yeah. That was good, but it was just harder to adapt. Like. Um, in a sense, uh, my education was sort of lost. Okay. Um, cause it wasn't structured in terms of, you yeah, feel like a sense of 
routine right. and structure because of being moved around or? Yeah I, yeah, I think it was something like that because when I was at Auburn Vale, like I was, you know, I wouldn't say a smart kid, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, like I, I knew things. I, you know, it was a spelling, it was a maths, whatever. Yeah. But then when I went to a different school, they had been shown something different. Okay. And yeah. um, I had to adapt to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I sort of like, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was as smart at that school as what I was at, you know, my first okay. first school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but after that, yeah. you know, got used to it and then, you know, High school, high school is good. Yeah, you, know, you you look forward to going going to school, and meeting up with your mates. Yeah, yeah, you know, not to you know, yeah, not to study or anything, that. but yeah, yeah. however that. It was just yeah. to go there, play table tennis, play soccer. Yeah, um, you know, have have a giggle with your mates. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, my mates were predominantly into basketball, but we also did down ball. Yeah, flicks. Like when flicks, we were like, you know, we had um, footy like cards, a a AF, AFL cards or yep. basketball cards, whatever was popular, yep. and basically you had to kind of just get it as close to the to the wall, to the wall as possible, yeah. and then you could yeah. win their card type thing. Yeah, and if you land on top of their card, you take their card or something like yeah, that. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, we were doing a lot of that. So yeah, that but we nah. did. I remember doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it was it was good. High school was high school was kind yeah. of the same, really. I think it it, it was. It was the same in the sense that, yeah, you, it was probably the best part. You wanted to just hang out with your mates. Yeah. Um, and I, I was the same. I didn't really focus as much as I really yeah. should have. And um, well, without social lights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then by year 11 and 12, year 11 and 12, you get that speech initially from the teachers where it's like, uh, like you're young adults now. And from this point on, you get to, you know, go out into the world. Yeah. And part of you goes like, fuck, this is real. This is yeah. like... There's two years left, and these faces, like, I'll, I'll never probably never see him yeah, again. That's you know right. what I mean? yeah. So, and it was only for the handful of friends that you had, yeah, are the ones that kind of you end up being carried through, um, throughout, yeah, life, yeah, and, that's right. Know, I still have friends as well back in from, um, from those days, also, yeah. And, um, do you have like any friends that you have from high school that um, you've still been able to carry through with, or from high school, not really, yeah, not that I can think of. Um, but from primary school, from original Auburn Vale, yep. um, there's a friend that I went to kinder with. Um, we did a few years of the primary school together and yep. we lost contact for a while, for quite a few years. Mm. Then, you know, social media comes comes out. Mm. You got your Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And, um, you know, you make contact with them again. Yeah. And um, ever since then, you know, we're, we're like brother and sister again. Yeah, beautiful. You okay. know, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah, you know, like she's got her life, I've got my life, but you know, we we still keep in contact. Yeah. You know, and like they know your ins and outs and you know their ins and outs, what you know, what triggers them or what triggers you and Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's it, like the passage of time may pass and you know, three or six months down the track you catch up with them, but it feels like yeah. That just doesn't you know, there is yeah. no you know, it feels like you've just continued where you've Yeah, that's off. right. That's right. Yeah, I think that's the that's beauty right. of it. Like, and, yeah, even even yeah. now, like I haven't seen her since freaking before COVID. Yeah, wow. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the last yeah. four years, but we're still, you know, talking, you know, a couple of times a week. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, probably what helps it as well, like with that, is the fact that there is social media. Yeah, you yeah. know, like we can jump online and you, you do, you kind of live vicariously through other people's page. Yeah, you do. And, um, you know, you're just very curious about what they're up to and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, we're kind of fortunate in a way that when we went through our schooling and everything, like social media didn't exist. So we took a lot for face value in terms yeah, that's of right. the, the strength of the friendships that you had yeah. and the relationships you built with yeah. your teachers or whatever and, and the life skills you got. Yeah. Um, do you have... Like with the life school skills in general, um, I think kids these days are a little bit different. Like their their heads are more down, yeah. looking at whatever device they've got or, com or a computer screen, and forgetting there's a whole world out there. Do you think that we had it easier or harder for you know the way we kind of done things back then and didn't have that connection with the world? Um, yeah, we did have it harder. Mm. Because you had to make more of an effort. Yeah. 
you know, whereas these days everything is at your hands. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if you wanted to see how someone was, you'd pick them up. You pick up the phone, ring them up, yeah, or yeah, you'd yeah. go and visit them. Yeah. Um, these days, where it's just you know a message. It's, yeah, it's, no, you, it's not even a call or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. even a call. Yeah. You know, it's you know you, you look at their Instagram and you know or their Facebook, or whatever. Oh yeah, no, this guy's right. Oh, this is what they did on the weekend. Yeah, Brett's, blah, blah. Brett's taking a shit. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, just one. <laughs> yeah, Brett's yeah. just another poo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Oh, well, he's eating the steak today. Yeah. <laughs> See, where are you eating? Yeah. Yeah. No, good for um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I still think it's better to, instead of, you know, going through phones and messaging people, or whatever, pick up that phone and, and, and talk to them. Yeah. Because I think you get more out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, if if you talk yeah. to someone, you can you can hear their emotion, and you, yep. like um, if, if you see a text, you might get the wrong idea. Yeah, you make assumptions about because yes. of the strength of the word yeah. or something like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of script what you're going to reply as well. Yeah. As so yeah. you might think of a yeah. way of saying it, you know, in your head, but when they receive, when they see it, they think, oh, you know, he's, you know, he's upset or whatever. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, they, they people just get it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, uh, true. Yeah, that's why it's better to pick up the phone, make an effort. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you what's your what do you, what's your opinion on schooling today, though? Um, it's easier. Yeah, I think um, because the, 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 I don't think their heads are in books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, whereas we used to have to. Yeah, like you know, yeah, the look, library. Look, yeah, you need to go and look, yeah, look, look for library. answers. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas um, and you use the teachers, you relied on the on the teachers yeah. for the knowledge and, and in the some teachers, ways too. When you think about I, it, yeah. I feel you know actually taught. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know th these days, you know, it's the kids sometimes teaching the teachers. Mm. Yeah, you know, or telling the teachers what to do, not you know teaching the teachers, but yeah, it's scary. Yeah. It's almost as though teachers are in fear of yes. what they can yep. and can't do. Yeah, exactly. And the kids are quite yeah. aware of it. I think their rights yeah. and responses. Yeah, their the human rights, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I think we're the last of that. Yeah. 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 You know, um, because with us, like we never would have copped a whack off a teacher. Yeah. At Greek school, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you caught one either with a with a ruler on the hand mm. or one in the back of the head. Yeah. You know, just either, you know, for my reason for being whacked was is because I couldn't see the blackboard from where I was sitting. Yeah, okay, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so those teachers put put a bit of fear into us. But from what my understanding is teachers before our time, mm. Um, they had the strap, they had belts, they had whatever, and they'd make mm. their students. Yeah, These yeah. days, the teachers, are, you know, are scared to even raise their voice to, yeah, you know, they got to get their pronouns right. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, bloody, you know, you mm. raise your voice. Oh no, I'm offended now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's crazy, isn't it? So yeah, it is. Like, yeah, you know, even with Alexander, like he doesn't bring home any homework. Not that I know of, anyway. Yeah. You know, and you think, you know, what are they learning? No, that's it. Yeah. Do you, does that worry you as well? Like with, with Alexander having a son that's growing up in a world of technology and less communication bit, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. less, well, I wouldn't say less opportunity, but opportunities that are kind of, I don't know, people aren't handed stuff really. I think it's more like, got to search for it, but it's so different in the sense that it's so sparse between what yeah. we used to have, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, he's, he's quite intelligent. Yeah. Um, not in a, in a book sense, mm -hmm. but. Street smart, wise. A, a, a bit, yeah, immature. a bit street, yeah, 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 yeah. Like he's got his head screwed on. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, um, like I'm, I'm hoping and I think that he knows right from wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, if I tell him, like if I show him something, you know, look what this kid's done to his parents, you know, 
Yeah. What would happen to you if you did that? Mm-hmm. He said, oh, I'd bloody cop it. And said, that fucking hate you, Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Oh, I think it's, you know, with with myself and the way I've sort of brought him up. Yep. He's, um, he's a bit of an old school, you know, mentality. Yep. You know, if, if you stuff up, mm. you'll get stuffed up. Yep. You know, um... Yeah, have respect for the elders. You know, you talk back, you cop it. Yeah, you have know? respect if, uh, if yeah. anything. I think. Yeah. You know, I just I feel like I still respect my elders, like even in public as well. Like I just, yeah, I couldn't imagine. Like you see a lot of footage online now of when um, younger people are belting elderly people. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like, I don't get that. I don't mm, understand right. that. It's just um, yeah, it irks yeah. me in a way that's just yeah, yeah. It's because sad. it's fucking they, just, they, it's really sad there's no the, like the lack of yeah. the moral Respect. compass that they have yeah. is like just so different that yeah. I don't understand it almost yeah you know what it is but you know I guess there's a lot of trauma and you know trauma elements from their family or their upbringing yeah. or if they're being uprooted from another country to be here or yeah. from one side of you know Melbourne to the other side to so have a yeah. whole group of friends uh, and they're going to defend uh, themselves uh, but it's still no but right. still like yeah. parents I think uh, are still at the forefront with regards to yeah, bringing out yeah, kids as well you, know, you, you, know? you got to take your kids right from wrong yeah yeah you know um, and a lot of it does come to the up you know it's up to the parents yeah yeah 100% you know? so you know with schools the teachers are there just to educate them yeah but everything else comes from home yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to teach your kids what's what, what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in that time that you you're with your kids. Yeah, because like a lot of time, like you know, kids are up in the morning, you don't spend too much time with them because they're straight at, at school. Yeah, and they're there for what six hours, seven yeah, hours six, a seven day. Hours, yeah, and home again. Um, yep. and then home again, and then you don't spend much time with them again afterwards. That's why you got to yeah. make everything count. What you're saying is 100 percent right. Yeah, you know I mean, like the, you, your parents are the they're the moral compass for your kids or for yourself right. when you're growing up. But I think teachers also have that role as well because they're essentially they're, they're almost the, the the foundation of how your kid is going to then transfer a lot of not only just school knowledge but life knowledge by the way they interact with teachers as well. Yeah, you know the teacher's going to essentially turn into the cashier at the shops or you know, uh, the teacher's going to turn into the potential um, uh, employer when they go to get a job, things yeah. like that. So there's only so much a parent can do yeah. and, and should do because it's up to the individual as well to yeah, get out there exactly and learn right. those skills. Exactly. I, like, and I think, yeah, teachers, yeah, at the developing age, you know, primary school yeah. and through to high school, they are at the forefront, really, because yeah, yeah. they're the main interaction that they have. Yeah, that's so. right. But, yeah. But maybe I don't even know if they still do humanities in high schools because I remember them doing that back know. in the day, and a lot of that was community-based uh, learnings and stuff like that overall. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, yeah. I'd have to find that out. Yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting overall. Yeah, he just looks forward to getting doing PE. <laughs> uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you, you said you wants to play for a fucking Collingwood. Yep. Yeah, the worst team oh, in the I, AFL. I, I, oh, I hope he does. Yeah, terrible, aren't they? I hope he does. Yeah, yeah, poor bugger. Nah, they're, they're all right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they did all right last year, didn't <laughs> they? Yeah, they're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I need to really meet in footy, so don't uh, hold it against me. But, um, yeah, he does. So, yeah, hold everything against him. So, Should no, it's good. <laughs> did you... Um, so, yeah, we finished our high school... Um, I think I actually got into RMIT doing polymer technology and it was kind of um, after your v- when you do your VCE you have to you choose five different options and this was option number five so I was yeah. like oh, I think I've done that for about 10 months and then just chose to go nah this isn't for me and basically like working in polymer technology it was all about um, plastics and injection yeah. molding and stuff like that yeah, so yeah, yeah. if I stayed at it for 20 years I would have made fucking millions during COVID with all perspex screenings and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, a little bit gutted about that, but I chose to go into the workforce um, and just, you know, start off working in fucking hospitality industry and yeah, factories and, yep. and just making money. So yeah, that's it. did you have any like anxieties 
towards the end of high school and like getting into the real world with um, work overall or uh, very little I've, I've always been a bit blase about things yeah you know, yeah um whatever happens happens yeah okay pretty yeah, much. yeah um i did exactly the same thing you did according to rmyt yeah um and it was choosing those options and it was the last option yeah, yeah. Um, and i got into marketing yeah nice yeah yeah um made some friends there mm-hmm. um but yeah it wasn't for me like yeah, it, yeah. it was a two-year course i stayed at that course yep but i didn't graduate or anything just did the course and that was it and yeah well yeah yeah you know, like yourself went into the workforce you know it was pretty much hospitality as well working in the chicken shop yeah then after that um or no, I wouldn't say after that. It was roughly at the same time. I did a security course. Yep. So I ended up doing security. Um, I was a bouncer at, um, at you know the Greek bars that they used to have down uh, Lonsdale and Russell Street. Yep, I do now because we mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yesterday um, I was like, yeah, no, I couldn't fucking think of it. But yeah. yeah. Greek Street in Victoria. Yeah, that's right. It is. And then um, also... <laughs> I did um, the exhibition buildings. So yeah. whatever exhibitions there were at the exhibition centre and at the exhibition building, yeah. I was doing security for them. Which one was it? Is the one, the, the old one? Both. Cool. Because what year was that? Because um, we're like the same age, aren't we? Yeah. Because the funny thing is, like when, one of the things I did uh, after leaving high school, my brother used to work for Australian Security Services Cleaning. That was the name of the company. And we used to clean um, after hours around all the exhibits in the old exhibition What buildings. was it called, the, the cleaning company? Australian Security Services. The cleaning company. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that was, you not, know what? That was like uh, what was nine, that? from 96 to 98. And that's when I started, I think, in... In 90, 98, it could have been. Okay, cool. Because maybe you wouldn't have known, you might have met my brother Michael then, maybe as well. Because he also did security. Was I, it Safeguard? I, no, no, no. He, because um, as I said, we don't, we don't cleaning. And then we, he ended up moving, like they, but at, around, that, around that time, Jeff Shed, the other, yeah. it, you know, yeah, yeah. near Crown was getting built. And I think it was actually, I think it was actually built. Yeah, so a yeah. lot of the exhibits were were going to there, yeah, 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 yeah and then we that. started doing some of the the, the actual um, yeah, yeah, whatever shows were there. We done yeah. the same thing, and um, he was also then. I think he then moved into doing security as well. Yeah, because then that's Cause how we have met his I'm partner. Pretty, I'm pretty so, yeah. sure that the owner of the company that I was working for, yeah, also had the cleaning as well. Yeah, all right, cool. I don't know if yeah, he had yeah. other two different names. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, the security side of it was called Safeguard. Okay, cool. And we did, oh, I remember doing the Flower and Garden Show. Okay, yeah. Doing security yeah. there. Yeah. Um, the Muscle Car Show. Yeah, I think, I've done, I think I've done a car show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done, yeah, we've done the Muscle Car one and that was at the original, yeah. the original one. In yeah, Carlton, yeah, yeah. Little vintage cars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Carlton Gardens. Um, yeah. yeah, I remember doing and, that. Oh, I can't remember what other shows it was at the exhibition centre. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you'd have the whole place to yourself. Yeah. You know, no one in there, doors are all locked. Yep, You just yep. walk around and have a look at, you know, yeah, what's on yeah. display. People are paying to, you know, to get in there where you're in there overnight. Yeah, 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 everything yeah. for free. You, yeah. You know, <laughs> touch here and there. Yeah. At the old one at night, did you ever, was there any, um, did you have any paranormal activity? Did you ever witness anything? No. No? Okay, no. cool. Yeah. Because um, I'd find a corner and close my eyes for a bit. Yeah, hey? <laughs> You'd find a corner and close my eyes for a bit. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Because nah. yeah, during the early 1900s, it was actually used as a morgue. Um, oh, because, I did. Yeah, because basically there was a plague that went through Melbourne. I don't know exact dates or anything. But yeah, there was because the amount of people that passed away, the old Royal Exhibition buildings was used as a morgue. Oh, wow. So, and they were saying, I never knew that. Yeah. So. But, I- and they were saying that, that they were saying that one of the top spies as well that the woman did hang herself too. Oh, wow. So whether there's someone hanging around, I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah. with with that, because um, I did the flowering garden show there overnight, um, 
I spent most of the time outside. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. So yeah. I yeah. was in the car just driving through. Yeah, just make know, sure no one's at the, the doors. walkways and, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You know, just do a bit of walking around. Um, and then, yeah, that was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, crazy. But yeah, the exhibition center, that was all right. That was good. Mm. Yeah, that no, was, was all right. Do you believe in any of that stuff? Like paranormal stuff from yeah. ghosts and. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that's what I was going to say before. Um, when mum had heard the knocking on the door, mm. she reckons that. Oh, from the caravan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she yeah. reckons that there was ghosts in that, in that shop. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, because she used to hear the knocking on the door like it was a thick, solid wooden door. Yeah. And it had a distinct sound on when you, like when you knocked on it. Yeah. And she wow. goes, someone knocked on it. Wow. Because that's why I went to the door and opened to have a look. Yeah, and there was no one there. And there was no one there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. She said other times um, you'd have both doors closed. So the front door of the shop was closed and the back door was closed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so what it was, you had the, the front of the shop, you know, you know what, people walking in from here, you had the, the front bench, yeah. And then her back room, and then there was a partition there, and another like, little kitchen area around yeah. the other side of the partition, yeah. which went out to the you know which With an alleyway where, where, thing where the door was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and between the partitions, mm -hmm. she had a curtain there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so cause she can just walk in, you know, to the kitchen area or whatever. And she said at times she said, you know, it's like someone walked past but flicked it. Oh, shit, yeah. When both doors were closed, yeah, yeah. Um, she said it flipped and I felt like a little breeze go past me and then that was it. And ah. um, it was quite common around that area. That's it. On okay. Union Road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yep, yep. Do you know the, any of the history of that area? Or? Um, I'm not 100%. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent, but um, th sure there were other shops around Flemington, Kensington. Yeah, that um, were probably some old bookies or something from Flemington. They kind of because oh, a lot of it was cattle yards too. You were on Kensington. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, there was another shop that was mm. around the corner from there that someone you know who lived upstairs or something every morning their shoes would be. Uh, right next to the bed because you know um or near the door or something like that because whoever was in that house just just like to position yeah, shoes yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. yeah i'm moving out thanks all good yeah no <laughs> i'm done yeah <laughs> not for me yeah. i'll buy some new shoes fuck it because <laughs> yeah they'll probably connect them you know if you end up moving out they might have connected their soul to the shoes and then just start traveling with you like, yeah oh, yeah no it, on, yeah. What, it, yeah yeah stuff like that man it not freaks me out but yeah, you know, it's it's something that's out of control. Yeah, when you think about it, in yeah, some yeah. ways, like you don't know how. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. it's a malevolent force or it's friendly, but like you just yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing. I, I I've had I did I have had a um a bit of a an, an experience there yeah. once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I remember one night we were at my ex-father-in-law's place yeah and my ex-mother-in-law I, I never got to meet her yeah yeah but she passed away in that house mm. and um yeah one night we had a party and i've gone to bed and everyone else was outside mm -hmm. and i've laid down and as i'm like laying down i had my hands just over over my chest yeah and I had my eyes closed and I felt like something just circling around the top of me. Yeah, yeah. And then pinned me down. Oh fuck. So I couldn't I couldn't get up, I couldn't call out, nothing. Yeah, yeah. But I'm semi awake to it yeah. and I'm trying to call out. I couldn't call out. And then in my head I like I felt as if it was her mother. Yeah, okay, yeah. Telling me to look after her daughter. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I'll look after her, I'll look after her. And then I've just gone, like, I've used all just, my strength or whatever yeah, and just yeah. gone boom like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, I've, like, that was it. Mm. Like, after I said, yeah, I'll look after her, whatever, it's like, you know, she's like, yeah, all right, you, you know, done. Yeah, cool. But, um, 
Were you still like terrified or at peace with that at that time? Um, a bit of both. Yeah, wow. A bit of both because yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not yeah. the only one that experienced that in the house either. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, my ex-father-in-law, he used to experience that too. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. That's unreal. Like he used to just, or someone just used to sit on his chest and he couldn't get up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he just used to like, only wiggle his feet and that was it. That's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It's like a form of paralysis, basically, when you yeah. think about it. Like, that's, some people would have that. Like, I don't know, the, the, the spirit world, they call it paralysis. They call it something else. Like, people are just kind of in a dream and they can't actually wake up from it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've they're heard of... conscious of it. Yeah. I've heard of quite a few people with that. And yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, trippy. Yeah, it, it yeah. is trippy. Yeah. Because anything, anything I've, I know or like, that I've experienced is that me and Beck, we actually done a, like a ghost tour in an insane asylum or prison that's in Ararat. Oh, shit. The Ararat prison. So. I, my brother's actually working down there now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, helping build something or whatever there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so now it was, it was, for predo- it was predom- predominantly used as a prison in late 1800s through to early 1900s and then it was turned into like, they refer to it as a uh, insane asylum or mental yeah, institute yeah, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So you had a lot of those, you know, those type of patients um, wandering the corridors and all. But during the tour, we saw numerous things. Well, numerous things happened. So I had a, a digital SLR, like a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, I've been, I'd been um, using it with absolutely no issues whatsoever, other than one thing. Like we went to Hawaii, and you know, to take some shots, and like it was, the weather was a little bit humid, so like the the sensor just at at um. It, it, Turn the camera off, which is fine. Yeah, well. And basically, from that from that point on, that was like five min, five years prior to us doing the tour. Yeah. But anyway, we we get to the location, and then we as soon as we get into the front door to like sign in and all, my camera stuffs up. It turns off, and I'm like, "Are you fucking serious?" And I've gone to bed. bed my camera's just turned off. Like, there's been absolutely nothing yeah. wrong with his camera ever since I've had it, and yeah. it's just fucking turned off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As soon as you go in. Yeah, and so like we're sitting in there waiting in the waiting room, turns on again, it's all fine. Then they do like a, a meet and greet and they tell you, you know, it's it's not uncommon that some people's mobile phones may be fully charged and as they're going through, suddenly it shows up there's no charge um, in the throughout the complex. Yeah. And sure enough, throughout the whole complex, you would have, you'd be, you'd go into the main cell area and upstairs, the, they would have all the cells were open, and say there was like ten of them. For at least two of the cells, um, the camera, same thing, it, 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 it did not work. It, it just like you tried taking a photo, nothing happened. And I'm like, this is fucking really bizarre. Like, yeah. so there was that, and then at one point, I've gone into one of the cells, and you know, just to get a feel for it. And as you're walking out. I felt like there was someone that either went like that, you know how when people sigh and they like <laughs> and they just like that like that deep that <laughs> nose comes yeah the 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 breath comes out of their nose yeah, or yeah. they like they like <laughs> like that <laughs> I heard that over like my left shoulder and I was like oh that's I don't like that that's creepy and then from just the left side of my body just felt fucking ill. Like, not like someone had punched me in the kidney or anything like that, or, but it was just like... Oh, like, a, oh, like a chill. Just, yeah, it was like a chill, but just an, an, an ill feeling. Um, so that happened as well. And what else? There was a... This was a freaky one because we'd gone downstairs into the main kitchen mm-hmm. and at the same time, there was... Uh, in the, within the group of people, there was someone that was like a, a clairvoyant that was there. And he's... he's um, He's gone, uh, did, um, did someone, did someone die here? And the thing is, all the, the tour guides are like, look, you know, we don't know the exact details of, of specific incidences, but you know, some people have felt A, B and C, like in this area, but that's whatever you're feeling, that's what you feel. That's what you go with it. That's yeah. what you go through. So you had the main kitchen area and there was a door that led out to a corridor that went left. And at the end of that corridor, there was a small bathroom that had like a, the original bath there, but they used to use it as a smoking room, like yeah. the smoked meat and all that. So when you when you open the door up, all the ro- the whole fucking walls and the ceiling were just like black soot in, in, yeah, in, yeah, their, yeah. in their presentation. And it just looked like, ah, uh, yeah. terrible. 
But anyway, that room in particular, apparently seven people had died in that room. Fuck. And this clairvoyant has gone, seven people died in this room? He goes, yep. And then we were just like fucking amazed that he was able to pick that up. And then, but the tool guide actually confirmed that, that there were seven deaths yeah. in that room. But then going back into the kitchen, prior to going in that area, basically what had happened was, is that we're standing there and they're giving a spiel about the kitchen itself. And me and Beck, there was, there was two other doors like leading to storage rooms, like a bakery, yeah. like we're with the bakery and, um, you know, other storage room. But we saw a black object go from one room straight into the other room. And I've gone, did you see that? Did you see that? And she's gone, yep, yep I saw that. And I'm like, fuck, that's crazy. But then that clair the, the clairvoyant, he's actually gone, there's a little girl in this room and she's looking for her mother. Jesus and, Christ. Yeah. And basically that's a, what it may have been. It may have been the little girl that she was always calling out for her mother. And then we put two and two together that basically like the tour guide ended up saying something in relation to that potentially the mother might have been one of the victims that was in that room like down the corridor. Wow. So yeah, that was the type of, one of the um, things we said, and we are just like. Rrr. My sister's a bit yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, not a clairvoyant or anything, but sometimes she can see people that have passed on. Yeah. And she can see them as clear as, I, you know, as what you can see me. Yeah, well, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, she's had a few experiences and like it, it's, freaked me out yeah we're yes. over we're overseas a, uh, a few years ago and it's like she's got a bit of a gift she can mm. read the coffee cups oh, like tea leaves and stuff like that or, yeah it's or similar more. yeah okay but yeah, with yeah. with the greek coffees you've got that bit of the mud on the bottom yep you know you swirl a cup around you know you tip it upside down let it sit for a bit so all, all the mud drains through mm. and she can sort of read it and I don't know. It, yeah, wow. Well. It's a bit of a gift, but like I don't agree with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're overseas, and she went to my cousin's mother-in-law's place, mm. and um, you know the lady there. She, you know, my sister goes, you know, I read your coffee cup, blah blah, blah. and now she's made out as if she can read the coffee cup. But she's seen someone there right next to her. Oh, wow. Like right? a guardian agent type thing or, or gu yeah. Someone that had passed. Yeah, yeah. Right? She goes, oh, I could see a, a young young guy in here. And um, he went, you know, he went by this nickname. Yeah. And the lady's like, fuck. She goes, that's, that's my husband's nephew. Yeah. And um, she goes, he died in the military yep on he had some kind of an accident yep. or whatever she goes yeah fucking he had a car accident yeah um and you know like so it's like he's telling my sister but my sister's making it out as if it's in the cup and yep. she's telling them yeah yeah, yeah. right yeah. and um she goes he looks sad yeah and um he he was about to propose to a girl mm. and you know it didn't end up happening because he had his accident and he's sad because he, he didn't get to do it and she's moved on and she's married someone else and blah blah and the lady freaked out because you know she's like how does what like, how would my sister know this yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. because no one knew it yeah yeah and um yeah she, like she was telling her everything and yeah. And then after, you know, my sister came back to the house and like she's told me she bawled her eyes out. Yeah. And she goes, it, it just drained me and I felt sorry, for, you know, for the bloke, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She goes, Will, she goes, I didn't see the cup. She goes, mm. I could see him mm -hmm. there and he's telling and he me. He was communicating through. Yeah. She was communicating and, through him. And that's not the first time she's done it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, even another friend of ours, her uncle passed away and he came to my sister and he said mm -hmm. tell nikki the house up on the hill yeah there's a box in that house and the box is hers yeah well and um 
my sister said to her, she goes, listen, she goes, your uncle came to me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, fucking, yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries. Mm -hmm. And um, ended up going to the house, found this box, mm. and it was the deeds to the house. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of unquestioned shit, man. Yeah. Oh, I've got, um, where I used to work, doing um, the fitness equipment. Uh, my boss's friend, she's, she's um, clairvoyant. Mm. And, yeah, one of the good ones, I'd say. Like, yeah. realistic and just... Well, I had I had a reading with her one day. Um, and what had happened was is that probably... Maybe it might have been 12 months earlier, I'd actually lost a friend um, from yeah. high school. Uh, yeah. yeah, a female friend. And she... Um, yeah, basically, she, she ended up getting me a job in Metro and all that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I spent some, you know, all... You know, well, working time with her and that, but yeah, she ended up passing away from an illness, and um, yeah, during this during this reading, she's gone. Um, there's a well, similar thing, like there's someone in the room with you, and I'm like, okay, and it's, and it's, yeah, let it starts with K. It starts with K, and I'm like, oh, so Kate. She goes, yeah. So it was a, a friend of mine, Kate, that had passed on, hmm. and. Um, the, she had a message, a message for me, and she the message was, um, "It's your time." So, and I'm like, she okay, so yeah, I'm like, "It's your time." Nah, not like it's your time to. Yeah, this, oh, to she pass away. That, that, nah, nah. That, that would have been like, my, oh fuck. Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> my I was like, it's, "It's your time. It's your time to take charge of your life. Your time. Your time to fucking just go for it." You know what I mean? Yeah. It, you take take chance. Take you, you know. <laughs> fucking so <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh, good. Sorry. Hey, right. So yeah, it was all. It's it's my time to take charge of my life yeah, and, yeah. and and grasp it with two hands. And um, she goes, and then she goes on. She there's a there's a brown couch. There's fond memories of a brown couch. And I'm like, okay, all right, what's going on here? And sure enough, like in our staff room at Metro, there was a brown leather couch, and it was used for, as like in as a staff room. That couch, you know, a lot of. A lot of laughs and all that during breaks or you know when we're all trashed yeah, and we're yeah. just congregated in this fucking room that's literally half the size of this garage um and it was a sick bay so you would always walk in with people yeah. like just fucking you know killed over you know from being drunk but um yeah basically she you know she remembers fond memories of all that type of stuff um whilst we were working but then she also there was mention of a, a ring which was and I'm like, okay, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know anything about a ring. You know, there was, we were just friends from, from, you know, primary school and high school and then end up working together. So, yeah, there was a ring that was brought up in the conversation and then, and pretty much that was it. Uh, two days later, I ended up getting a call from a guy that I used, that used to work at Metro as well. Hmm. Um, and I, I had not seen him or spoken to him in five years and he's basically <laughs> fucking just get a shit out of me there you go <laughs> fuck hello check <laughs> these mate that that scared the shit out of me what's that huh oh the phone yeah because you go about the ring and then uh, ring ring and then the ring and then the ring <laughs> oh, <laughs> far out <laughs> yeah sorry about that oh, I'm gonna edit that into it that's great um, so anyway, yeah, she made mention of a ring, knew nothing of it. Uh, you know, two days later, as I said, I had a, a friend of mine that he used also, he worked there when, you know, at the same time, about, you know, me and, me and Kate were working yeah. and had not, had not spoken to him, um, five years mm -hmm. hadn't spoken, hadn't called, hadn't messaged, nothing. And basically he, he, um, yeah, he gave me, uh, uh he picked up the call, had a chat. And he goes, oh, by the way, of um, he goes, uh, do you know Kate's mum where she lives at all? Like, and you know what her address is because I've got a little, I've got a, like some makeup and jewelry box from Kate when she was the last time she was here. Yeah, like had it for like five years. And there's a, um, yeah, I just want to give it back to her. And I'm like, hey, no worries. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I'm like, he goes, yeah, there's like a, there's a, a ring. There's a ring in it. Oh, jeez. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, is it a, like, I'm like, are you serious? 
and he's like, yeah, this is a ring. And I'm like, is it, is it like a, it's got like a, a pink sapphire um, diamond in it or whatever, it, whatever they call it. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, it does. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. So it was like, legit. it was legit in the sense that um, I, whether it was chance, whether it was whatever it was, yeah. It just let you know. It was mentioned two days ago to me that there was a ring that you know that yep. Kate must have wanted back <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. was probably trying to get through to me to to get it. Yeah. But yeah, maybe it was successful in yeah. that sense. That, like it ended up going back yeah, to her yeah, mother. Yeah, it might have yeah, been her mother's. So yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So it's freaky. It, it, it is like you know, there's been you know things like that that I've heard. There's you know. Dreams, visions. Yeah. 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 You know, like, you know, I wouldn't say deja vu, but, you know, there's dreams that I've had that sort of like happened. Same. I was about but, to say that, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, they kind of happen in snapshots. Like, it's, a, it's almost like a picture. Like, oh, in your dream, there's like, it feels like deja vu because then you go there. And then you're like, I've never been here before, but I think I have been. Like deja vu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. No, I had a dream. Um, Twenty four years ago, I think it was mm. so September eleven. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 It wasn't specifically September eleven. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Um, but. Um, what this dream was is like oh, what the dream was. I was watching the news, yeah, and um, there was a building that was on fire, mm. and you had the reporters interviewing the people, and the people were crying and saying, "Oh, you know, this building is on fire." And all I could see was the one window. It was a big window, and all this black smoke, you know, bellowing out. Mm. Um, and there was a staircase that run up the the side of the building, but you know it wasn't. It was more of a ramp, yep. not a staircase, more of a ramp. Okay, so you yeah, know the ramp so zigzag up buildings, yeah, yeah, and yeah, they're concrete. Yeah, yeah. So what it was, the firemen were running up this ramp, and they've gone into a door. Yeah. Right, and they've gone into the door, and then the ramp collapsed. Yeah, shit. But I did it fall this way, I did it fall that way, it just dropped exactly the way those twin towers dropped. Yeah, wow. But I had dreamt this three months before that, That's before a, yeah. September 11 happened. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I remember telling my, my missus at the time, I said, you know, I had this dream. It was, you know, like, wow. I, I still remember it now vividly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then I said to her, yeah, this is a dream that I had, blah, blah. And then it was a couple of nights after our engagement yeah. when September 11 had happened oh, and wow. we were dropping off a mate back at home and um, we got down Barclay Street and he's caught us up. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, fuck, as America's just been bombed. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, oh, planes hit the building, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So we've rushed home to put on the news and watch it on the news. Yeah. And then when you see the towers collapse, I've looked at her. I go, remember that dream I told you? She goes, yep. I go, that was it. That's it, wow. And she's like, fuck. Yeah. And she goes, can't you dream that we are, we're going to win that slow? I know, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, <laughs> no, right. yeah, it just. You just all, like, we yeah. always say the same thing. It's kind of like, fucking, why can't you just manifest like seven numbers or something? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's that. Savage, but, I remember that yeah. vividly, man. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Is it because we're like people like us? Or everyone, I should say, are we in tune with like a, a spiritual side or? Yeah. Probably, know, probably. I don't know. Maybe we're just a little bit more in touch with our, yeah. I was going to say feminine side. Feminine side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <how, laughs> no, nah, so you, you feel, yeah, probably how open you are and sort of how holost, you know, holistically and how the world yeah. operates in different levels. And, yeah, you know, that's right. Because you're quite religious yourself, aren't you? Yeah. In the sense that. Yep. So yeah. and there's there's a lot of that too. Yeah. 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 A lot of that involved um, with visions, mm -hmm. um, dreams, and stuff like that. My grandmother, she she had plenty of them. 
Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, um, oh, I think her faith in God, in Jesus, um, and all the religious you know, aspects of, you know, like you yeah. know, being orthodox and whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, has stemmed through to me. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you know, cool. because, you know, she had visions which sort of helped me out. Mm hmm. Um, of saints and you know healing healing me with my psoriasis and yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. and all that um yeah. so her believing and hearing her stories made me believe even more yep you know um, yeah 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 what well, she was a great woman yeah she was great yeah you know that was um dad's mum overseas mm. yeah have she, you have you, because um, you've recently just, you know, went through a pretty traumatic kind of, or well, traumatic experience with um, the quadruple bypass. The bypass, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you have any, was there anything that happened during that process at all? Like any connection? Um, anything? Nah, not, just not that more, I can yeah, remember. Yeah, like your faith. Your faith. Just, yeah, just yeah. faith. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I knew that I was going to be in good hands. Yeah, cool. You know, um, yeah, I, I had the conversation with mum yesterday where she said that, you know, she prayed. Yep. You know, and just saying it's not my time, it's not my time. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe it was because, you know, I had, you know, 13 year old son that I still got to look after. Yep. Well, look, you know, me and his mum, we both look after him, you mm. know, when, when he's with us. But, um, you know, I still feel that I've got a lot to teach him yep. about, you know, life in general, in struggles, in, mm -hmm. you know, mentality and everything. And, yep. you know, to me, you know, that operation was, you know, like, like um, mm -hmm. to give him guidance, say, look, son, this is what I've gone through, yep. you know. Um, hopefully life's not as hard for you, but, you know, if, you know, if you're going through struggles, you, you just push through it. Yeah, you're not alone. Yeah, you know, that, that's, you're that's not, you're exactly not alone. right. Yeah. You know, your family's always going to be here. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, what I heard it somewhere the other day, you know, when, you know, when times are tough, mm. who do you go to first? Your yeah. family. Yeah. You know, when you have, you know, the best times, who do you go to first? Your family. Yeah. So your family's always going to be there. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, Especially they're, they're always going to step up to the plate, really. So yeah, never, never. Yeah, that's right. Them down, so that's right. But um, yeah. Mm. So yeah, that by that bypass was one hurdle. Yeah. Next hurdle is going to be a kidney transplant. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're on the waiting list for that. Yeah. 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 So we'll see how we go with that. Yeah. Is that um, <laughs> pretty much just waiting for a donor. Yeah. That's, that's the reality, isn't it? You yeah. Know, some compatible donor. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've just got to finish doing a few more tests, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. Until they say, yeah. Mm. Have you a lot of, you've had a lot of conversations with yourself about your morality and, you know, your mortality and, you yeah. Know, yeah. In yeah, recent times. Like, you know, you start to understand now that you're not immortal. Mm. You know? Um, yeah. You know, like we never knew you're immortal, but you've always wanted to be like that, you know, yeah, Superman, superhero. Yeah. But um, you know, we're all human. Yeah. And something's going to get us. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know. Um, and that's the thing. Like, a, I think one of the questions I did ask you previously, one or before the podcast even was, um, what's what's your what two what two strengths. What are your two strengths and what's your kryptonite? Yeah. And I think you said that, you know, one of them was actual strength and the other one was invisibility, but yeah. also the kryptonite was your son. Yeah. You know, your son's the kind of the one that brings you to your knees, basically. His bloody phone. <laughs> oh, mate. Hey, right. I'll call him back. I'll call him back after. So, yeah, your son, he was the kryptonite. Yeah, life. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, mm. it's yeah. He's big kryptonite, you know. Um, 
do anything like all, all kids I suppose you know for their parents you know parents will do anything for their kids yep you know um even like you know nephew and niece yep 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 you know just to, just to see a smile on their face you you do anything for them yeah you know no, that's good um no nah, she's the best too no <laughs> also, yeah that's no, good you've been able to create a lot of opportunities for him and yeah yeah Hopefully you follow through, follows on with his dream, man, of want to play for Collingwood. And, yeah, oh, yeah, I hope so. Training. Oh, I hope so. That'd be awesome. That'd be it's cool. just, like, like I tell him, you've got to aim high. Yeah. Aim high and, um, you know, even if you don't make it to the AFL, you make it on a level that's, you know, yeah. just a bit under. Absolutely. Just, yeah, just keep, you know? keep, it, keep doing it and keep playing. That's right. Don't, don't give up. Mm. Has he been gymming at all as well now? How, yes, how, no, old's, how old's how old's he? Because he's, he's here eight, but he's thirteen. Yeah. The thirteen. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, so. he's half assed about it. Mm-hmm. Like I'll take him. Yeah. And um, my, you know, son, you know, come to this workout. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, no I can't be bothered. Oh. Got to get into it. Fucking come on. on. <laughs> move. <laughs> Who <Move>, exercise? <laughs> yeah. It's not going to lift itself, son. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much how we met, really, isn't it? Yep. So, like, it was in the uh, gym. Yep, in the gym. So it was. I was working at uh, Derrimet. I think it was just before you were working. Like there. just before it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I, I, we would have just you know struck up conversation or something. Yeah. You know, in between sets or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, yeah, because you, I think when I started training at Derrimet, it was. As uh, I mentioned to you, the, I had a mate of mine, Craig. Uh, Craig, yeah. Craig McDiven. So yeah. he was working with me in a computer shop yeah. um, doing uh, his work experience that turned into a seven-year career <laughs> yeah. for, for, for him. <laughs> yep. And then, um, yeah, during during that time, he was like, oh, I want to start training in the gym. And I'm like, yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll teach you some stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. And he, he lives in fucking Altona Meadows. That's right. So he's yeah. in Altona Meadows. I'm in, I'm in Deer Park. And where Derrimet was was almost an in-between in type between, thing. Yeah. So that, like, led us to go in and train at that time. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I remember just, as you said, like, just sparking up conversation because, if anything, the size of the gym lent itself to that community, like a That's real right. small – it was a small group, but it was friendly and it was familiar faces that, like, made the place That's right. what and it was. There's, yeah. there's a, few, a few of the boys now yeah. that still train at Derrimet. Yeah. And uh, if I go back there, I'll see him there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We call ourselves the original, yeah, yeah, yeah. original Derrimet crew. Ah, that's it, yeah, um, yeah. Do you remember young Andrew? And he had a brother? Andrew. No. Um, he, he was very young at the time. He, you know, he, um, I think I might know. Does he, does he train, does he do, does he do PT in... Good life at war. No, no, Jacob. Jacob, yeah, I remember Jacob. Yeah, Jake, Jacob. Jacob, he was, he was so committed. One. He was full on into it. And yeah. yeah, he, he did was very good. well. He, we helped he him out. <laughs> we done a lot with him. He, yeah. he competed as well. Did you really? Yeah, good on him. Yeah, he competed. I know. Um, he did very well. Yep, yep. I remember him you know, coming up to me and asking me for advice. Yeah, beautiful. But, you know, he, he's, a, he's a bloody PT. <laughs> he's a PT. There. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah. yeah, nah, it's funny how things all work out. The. The friendships that we've got out of that, it's, I, I think gym friendships um, would be better than your school ones. Because it's almost an extension of it, really. Like, it's only, because there's only a, a handful of people that you hold on to, like, that I've, you know, yeah. from the gym. Like, yeah. I remember, as you said earlier, like, you know, I started training there, but then I started working there. And then I got fired from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah the friendships that i got from um the gym from the gym yeah so basically yeah i was yeah training there with with craig but then i ended up working there yeah. and then ended up getting fired from there so but um one thing that i still cherish even to this day is the people that i met like i was doing yeah, as you 100%. know as, as you know like i was doing from 10 p.m to 6 a.m That's and right. whilst there wasn't hardly anyone there the crew that came in in the morning um, were all my age. They were all mature yeah. age, and they were training before work. Yeah, I and think I was one of them. Yeah, yeah, you were. And yeah. basically, like, we, we, they would, everyone would come in, and they would talk amongst themselves, 
and um, you know we were all just close enough to be yeah. to consider them friends and I see like even see him in public you know on, on the rare occasion and it just feels good you know to, to actually see them and yeah. uh, and you know we've, we've fucking gone out for breakfast together you know with all yeah. of us and spent a new years with one with one one that one year so yeah. um, and that's that was pretty cool that was something yeah. I never experienced yeah, and that's yeah. that's the one thing I hate and I think it's one thing like I must admit it's it, it's an excuse but it's something that I kind of like just can't get over is the fact that like you know when I got fired, I lost that. Yeah. I lost a lot of it. And I've never been able to really find it yeah. in another gym. And I'm like, maybe I should just keep trying gyms. But, I yeah, re- it's... I it's, really it's, it's try it on, yeah, maybe it's helmet. Yeah, I'll yeah, give it a so crack. It's not bad. Mm. It's not bad. And in, yeah, yeah. In, in saying that, with the gym friendships, it's because we're all on the same wavelength. Yeah, like, yeah. We've all got that one thing in common, you know, one person could be the richest person in the world, yeah. and he could be the poorest person in the world. Yeah, yeah. And you're both at the same place doing the same thing. And mm-hmm. actually, you know, what it doesn't matter what happens outside of there. Yeah. You've got that bond in there, and yeah, you know, it's like your two different worlds. They they, they come together. No, nah, precisely. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's phenomenal. And we're all there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, you know, it could be to look good, feel good. Um, a lot of us, it's for our mentality. Yep. And yep. confidence. Yep. Um, and that's where we all came together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still do. Yeah. And help each other out. Yep, yep. You know, instead of saying, oh, fucking Lord, that's why I you know, he looks like shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, mate, you know. Yeah, that's good. You know, nah. but, you know, that's it, yeah. You actually um, notice someone that was struggling or help them out yeah, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the technique and it was it was well, appreciated because it was a small enough group to actually see that but so. then when it comes to ego yeah like, you know you just you just stay there yeah. so looking to the road ahead what is what is um yeah the road ahead what, what does it look like has it changed are you still on track what are you um yeah slightly changed mentality changed um after my operation yeah because you know you don't take things for granted. Yeah. You know you you know you hear one one minute you could be gone the next. You know I, I never knew what was going to happen. Yeah. You know, through that operation, you know, like I said, just have that faith that everything's going to be all right. You come out, you know, safe. Yeah. You know, on the other side. Yeah. Um, and that was the case, which is good. Um, and just back to normal life hopefully after that yeah yeah and until until the next operation which is you know you know the kidney transplant again but um you know back in the gym you know pushing nearly as much as what i used to yeah um just just getting there take it take it slowly there's there's no rush yep yep um you know, it's about the journey it's not the, the yeah, destination of this, yeah, so. that's Come exactly on. right yeah. it's it's a marathon mm-hmm. not a that's not a sprint, sprint. yeah yeah you know? no, good man um and, and that's why that's a leg- legacy that you want to leave behind to, yeah you know to your kids or whatever you yeah. know that you know you, you'll get you know over hurdles in life yeah you know you just, just got to keep keep going keep your, you know, your head screwed on yeah you know don't let yeah, you know, too much get here. Yeah. No, um, good. That's it. That's your legacy, then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, just keep just keeping keep, goals. Keep keeping goals, keep man. Yeah. Awesome. And Beautiful. you know, um, make sure, you know, like, you know, you get your health checked. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's my thing, isn't it? Well, we can't yeah. just we, we leave things till it's too late. Or yeah, yeah, that's you right. Know, we start feeling, you know, unwell. We just leave it. Or yeah. We, okay. There's a <laughs> there's a, a tumor on your neck, and then it turns into a basketball. And yeah, that, yeah, exactly on, right. You know, like some people on fucking some of those shows, and you're like, my god, you've been yeah, you've been carrying you that around yeah. for like 14, 15 fucking years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah. do you think you might want to go to the doctors now, man? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Just half a fetus hanging out of my gut. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Fuck, yeah. It's my twin brother. Sure. I, I recommend it. You know. Yeah. For people our age. 
Yeah, hundred percent. So just yeah. just go go get yourself checked. Go do your bloods. Yep. Um, you know because I never knew. Mm. Yeah, you know, that I had it lucky. Yeah, you know, had had those tests done. You know, prior to my transplant. Yeah, and um, you know, they said you know you've got blockages. Mm. Like, Shit! All right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, and it's literally just thin stents in there, or one, two, no, three, no, four, no, no. like a whole full of replacement valves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Fuck. Yeah. That's intense. So they've yeah cut me open and yeah. 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 Scars. Big scar. Which camera? Ah, right, yeah, yeah. Big scar. There you go. Straight through. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Shazzy tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Did you ever have a fear like this is fucking stupid? In, this is what my thinks, no, man. No, nothing's off limits here. Right, so you're on, you're on the bench press and you've had surgery and you're back in the gym and you're going down the bar. Do you ever think you just, yes. you're just going to go boom yep. straight over? I, yeah. I, I actually did yeah. feel a bit of a twinge oh. um, yeah, just a couple of weeks. Oh, not a couple of weeks, but it would have been a couple of months after surgery. You know, just yeah, being yeah, back yeah. in the gym. Mm. I've, yeah, I've been on a Smith machine and I've yep. gone down and feel this tweak on my... Oh shit! Yeah. So I racked it back up and just you know lifted at that. Yeah, cool. But Smart, man. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah it, <laughs> when I was doing physio, the, you know, um, the people there said, you know, you can't lift more than fifteen kilos or. Mm. Oh, fucking really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, nah, yeah, I did my my physio treatment, whatever, and um, they said to me, they go, you don't really need to be here. They said, you know, you're doing this every day you're back in the gym or whatever yeah um as long as you're not stupid about it mm. Mm. and um yeah so, so your body's adapted to it quite well just yeah because of your lifestyle choice and all yeah 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 yeah, and, yeah 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 beautiful cool yeah you? sometimes like now i i don't even feel like i had that surgery yeah you know because you know my mentality is like fucking just gotta get in there yeah, yeah get yeah, it yeah. done yeah go home and eat and whatever yeah but um yeah after training then you're like you're buggered and then i think to myself i've got to go home now i've got to start my dialysis yeah you know, that that's every night mm-hmm. um mm. that's a drainer yeah literally yeah yeah and yeah. drain your food out <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah um is your pre-workout in the next day a little jar is it drink it again no kidding no nah, just coffee <laughs> just coffee now yeah just coffee i'm saying from your cafe though is that as your coffee in the morning is it you like have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah suck it out <laughs> <I'm> the straw <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, terrible i'll tell you what just like you know it's it's mentally draining as well yeah for sure because you know you have to you know wipe this down get your bags out you know, you know, um, sanitize, sanitize, yeah, and then put this together, and then sanitize, and then fucking do this, and then sanitize. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck, how many times you got to sanitize? Yeah, well, um, but you, you have to do it, yeah. everything's got to be clean. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that takes hours, eight hours a night, yeah, and then in the morning, you get up, press this, take down these um, numbers, sanitize, mm. press this. Do this, do that. So it takes me about fifteen minutes from the time I get up until the time I just unclip. Yeah, yeah. That must be a big. That would have been a big like shock for you, I guess, in terms of change of lifestyle. Yeah. In terms of getting up and just getting yeah. ready and coming home and yeah, having a yeah. rest. Like yeah. I, I can't now, um, like go to the gym at, at a later time. Yeah. Because because I start work early in the morning, mm. I've got to be up at. 4 30 probably at the latest yeah so factoring in that time to then get ready for work and yeah yeah so i i need eight hours every night so i've got to be mm. in bed by 8 30 yeah at the latest for me to be up at 4 30 yep and then um mm. go through the motions of you know getting up and you know draining everything out and undoing this and screwing that and yeah you know whatever Mm. But um, yeah, then I'm at the door, and you know, the rest Going of the day I'm working. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Go about your business. Yep. Did you um through that process? Do you want? I hope you don't mind me talking about it. No, so, I don't mind at all. Yeah, like did you with that? Because you seem to you seem to be in a good place for it. Like in terms of um, 
like you've accepted it and it's it's worked into your lifestyle quite yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Have you been able to give been given an opportunity where you can um like pass on that knowledge to people going through it as well? Like have they N- not really. Like I yeah. haven't really come across anyone that is going through it. Yeah. I've come across people that have been through it. Yeah. There's a guy that I worked with who his daughter she was born with like I think one kidney or something. Yeah. Or she had kidney issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, up until the age of three, um, she was on dialysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the one that was telling me that he goes, everything's going to be all right. This, this, and that. And um, just make sure you do it. Make yeah. Make sure you follow. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So he was the one giving me guidance. Yeah. Good. Um, good. But, you know, as far as me coming across someone that I can give my guidance, not yet, mm. but, you know, my mentality is, you know, do what you have to do. Yeah. You know, um, don't muck around, just get it done. Yeah. And um, mm. just, like, like I said earlier, just have faith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's good. Comes, no, you seem to be, you'll be a great person to talk to about it. Like, yeah. You, you're just... You know, listening to your talk, your upbringing, everything, um, your way of life, the healthy choices you've made with, well, within the, within existing lifestyle of going to the gym, and yeah, 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 keeping fit, and your 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 mindset with that and all that. Like a lot of people can learn from it, man. So, yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah, you know, like in my early years, I wasn't as fit. I wasn't fit. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, the most I got to was about 135 kilos, and that's yeah fat overweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know a few things happened down the track, and you know you change your lifestyle, and yep. Now you want you want to be better for it, and yep. you know, um, like I said, you know it's leaving that legacy to my son to to yep. say you know no, no matter what difficulties there are in life. There's always, you know, an option. Always a choice, you know, yep. Um, yep. A choice. Yep. And you get over it. Beautiful. Cool. Go hard and then go home. Go hard, go home. And connect. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> cool. Good work, man. All right. Well, thank you. No worries. On that, on that note, I think, yeah. Yep. That was great.